Yo, what is good, Dev guys? Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to fix the error with our mesh messing up, and we're also going to add our first person arms. So I want to navigate to our code here, and I want to go to FPS series. Let's go to source, allow our game, and we need to go to this character folder. And you see here that the entire folder structure is disgusting. What I'm actually going to do is ignore it. In my own project, I usually would set up a public and a private folder that way that I know that all the header files are here and all the CPP files are here. You know what I mean? Um, you can organize however you want to. I just didn't want to get too deep into that type of stuff. So let's just go to this character class here. So I'm open up the character header and the character CPP file. And inside of here, we need to actually create a new pro a U property for our skeletal mesh component. So let's go to where they already created some new properties here. Let's grab this puppy here. And I'm going to just make a U skeletal mesh component. It's going to be a pointer and we're going to call this mesh 1P. That's fine. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, I'm using GitHub Copilot. It kind of uh, auto completes things for me. Uh, it's right here if you not uh, if you don't. It is $10 a month. Uh, I do get it free up until August. So we'll see how it does and I might keep on paying for it. But for right now, it's pretty good. Like it, it, it kind of uh, completes me pretty well. So we create this pointer to this first person mesh, but we also need to create a, a getter function so that we can actually, uh, if we need to pull that and do something with it in, in, in Blueprint. So I'm going to come up to this public section. I'm going to go down to the bottom of it. I'm going to make a U function. This is going to be blueprint callable. It's also going to be blueprint pure. I'm still not sure if you need to type both of those together. Uh, under here, I'm going to say force inline. And I'm going to use a U skeletal mesh component pointer. And we want to say get, I want to say get first person mesh. And you see here it says return first person mesh, but I, I want it to return mesh 1P. And this is so that if we ever need to use the first person mesh and blueprint, we'll have access to it. So with that, we can go to the CPP file and go ahead and construct this puppy. And we want to do it after we construct the camera here. So because we want to attach it to the camera. So I'm going to say mesh 1P is there we go. Equal to a create default sub object and using the new skeletal mesh. And then we want to set up the attachment. 1P, set up attachment, and attach it to the camera component. And then we also want to set uh, its owner only C. Okay. Set owner only C uh, to true. And this will make it so that the first person is only seen by the owner of the object. So that's creating our first person mesh there. Um, let me make sure that that header didn't get included. Okay, we did. And now we need to navigate to a class. And this Lyra code is like a minefield. You got to understand how to navigate it. And that's pretty much what this series is going to help you figure out. Like, there's only so many classes you as a developer really need to, to mess with unless you're trying to do something very custom. Then it gets you know, you got to start touching everything. Um, but we actually want to go to a class called character parts as it's inside of this uh, cosmetics folder. It is called Lyra pawn component character parts. So we want the pawn component, which is this one right here. So I'm opening up the header file and the CPP file. And then I'm going to right click here, close tabs to the left. And inside of this CPP file, there is a function that is called spawn actor for entry. And there it is right there. We can actually control click on this and get to this function here. And we need to uh, do some logic inside of this if check here before this switch statement. So if we type down here, make some space, if we say spawned actor, and we want to say set owner and we want to set it to the owner's component get owner and go ahead and put a semicolon so the way that this function is working is, is it's taking a, a part that we give it 
and it's finding the owning actor, which is a pawn. And somebody just joined the Discord. And it's finding an owner actor that's a pawn, and it's attaching it to its uh, scene component here. So what we're able to do here is when we get this spawn actor, we can set the owner of that spawn actor to the owner of the component that we're attaching this component to. Because say we're spawning in a mesh, we are taking this mesh and finding the pawn that we want to attach that mesh to, getting its scene component that we want to attach to, and then attaching to that scene component. What we're doing right now is hijacking that code and saying, okay, let's let's see who owns that scene component. And that's who we want to set the owner of this component to. So we, now we also want to iterate over all of these different components that this spawn actor has. So I'm going to say for each, and we want to say spawn actor that I get components. And I'll show you how this looks in the editor when we actually uh, take a look at what's happening. So we want to get the components from this actor. I'm going to say const auto and, and kind of mess, messed itself up there. Uh, const auto and then we can call this component. And we pretty much want to say if this primitive component, you primitive component pointer and say primitive component. If this is equal to a cast to you primitive component. So basically if this component is of type you primitive component and we want to use the component, we want to go ahead and say primitive component and we want to set owner no C to true. So this will get rid of the owner seeing that third person mesh. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and that builds successfully with no errors. So now let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we go to content, characters, cosmetics, this is where all of this is stemming from. So pretty much this class right here, this pick random character class is telling our pawn which character part to select. And then it's choosing from one of these actors here. So this is what the spawned actor is. This spawn actor has a mesh component. So that's when we go back to the code, we, we check to see if the spawn actors um, components are equal to a primitive component. Then we set it to no C. That's here. We want to say this component, if this is equal to a primitive component, which it is, it stems from you primitive component. If this is, we want to set it to owner no C. So that's where that kind of happens. Now in a more advanced system, a system where this component will hold third person and the first person component, you're actually going to want to change this code. I won't set it up in this series because that whole system is for a, uh, a, a more in depth system on setting up a custom skin from a player selecting the skin in the lobby. So that, I didn't want to get into that in this series. If you want access to code like that, definitely check out the, the got the higher tiers on my Patreon. So I'm gonna press play and we're gonna see if everything uh, is still working, but minus the head. So you see here, we have no third person body blocking us. And we just have a floating magical gun. And I'm shooting with a magical gun. Okay, so that's working fine and dandy there. So now we can go to where we actually want to set up our first person arms. So that is going to be, let's go to all, go to plugins. And if you don't have plugins showing, and this project should by default, but just in case it doesn't, uh, just make sure you go to the settings here and say show plugin content. I'm actually going to turn off engine content. Don't really want that right now. And I want to go to the shooter core content here. I'm actually going to right click on this and set a color. That way it's easier to recognize for me. And now we're going to go into there, go into the game folder. That's where the pawn, this pawn is actually used in uh, the pawn data that gets spawned whenever we are in something like a uh, game mode other than the default game mode. So let's jump into here. And you see here we have our mesh component 1P and we can go to the viewport just so we can see everything. And unfortunately we're not able to, to mess with this because it's set to visible only, but we can set its relative location 
uh, to zero, zero, zero if we wanted to inside of C++. But since the default camera mode just moves it for us, then it's not really necessary. So here I want to plug in my Godric FP naked uh, mesh here. Let's set it up to be aligned properly. So negative 90 and uh, we drop it minus 180, I believe. There we go. And then we move it five units on the X. So our arms will be in this position. Maybe that's a little bit too low. So maybe minus 170. There we go. That looks better. So our arms will be in this position, but since they are at the idle state and we haven't set up any animation blueprints yet, uh, we won't be able to actually see them. So what I'm going to do right now is change this to a uh, animation asset. And I'm going to just use uh, an idle animation of any kind. Let's use a uh, idle rifle, I guess, right here. So we'll use this animation just to see what it looks like in the editor with the first person arm. Okay, so here you see we got our first person arms. They are equipped and uh, they look pretty good. Uh, I, gave, I gave it purple skin because I wanted to be uh, ethnicity uh, agnostic uh, just so no one gets offended or anything like that. I'm not trying to get canceled out here. But yeah, so you see we have our first person arm set up properly. We have our first person camera set up properly. And we also set up the, the fact that our third person mesh no longer shows to us. So I'm going to stop this. You can see there's that floating gun that we're going to handle in a, in a later video.